Welcome back to Brashonomics. You know, I was just discussing, of course, it being uh, my wife and mine's anniversary. And, you know, not only do people like to look at maybe their returns year over year, well, they probably look at their tax returns, but also looking at things like their 401k and their investments. But sometimes you have to also be able to look forward to figure out what's going to happen to make sure that, well, you're on the right path and you'll have another anniversary in your home or another anniversary with your 401k or whatever it may be. Uh, Joe Eddings and Caroline Loudenbach join us with the Eddings Group. And, well, first of all, welcome back, guys. How are you? Great. Thanks for having us back. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, You know, every year, and maybe not exactly on the same day every year, but every year certain things change in a real estate market, certain laws, certain, I guess, certain uh, the ways people buy and sell real estate are changing. Of course, 10 years ago, there wasn't much of a short sale market at all. And 15 years ago, it was different than it was yesterday. Uh, what are when you start looking at short sales, which I know is something you guys do a lot of, how do you look ahead or and look behind to realize that certain times every year or throughout the year are really going to change? Um, a lot of that comes down to statistics, looking at what's going on and what's happening. And like last time we were on the show, we were talking about the market, the lack of inventory. Um, we've noticed that REO bank-owned properties have dropped, and along with with the short sales, as well. And it's kind of funny because we're we're kind of moving on from what we talked about last time on the show to to here, and talking about bank-owned properties and and short sales. And like you know, like last year, or two years ago, that REOs took up, you know, out of the distressed real estate, seventy percent were bank-owned properties or foreclosures, and now it was thirty uh, percent was short sales. Now that has flipped. So now we're seeing a kind of a different trend. Even though inventories are down, even though short sales are down, but now it's more short sales than they are bank owned properties. So we're seeing that kind of a trend. So we're kind of coming to close to the end of the year. So we're looking at, okay, so now it looks like short sales are more primarily kind of what's going on than the bank on the foreclosures, which is great. You know, that's that helps the market. There's less banks have houses put in the market. So what else is going to affect that? And right now is one thing we're looking at is, is you know, every, the big question is, is Debt Forgiveness Act. This is the cancella- cancellation of debt, which is basically considered to be a personal income. You can be taxed on that. So it was formed back in 2007. It was extended again uh, in 2009 through 2012. Well, here we are. We're almost at the end of 2012. And, you know, what is going to happen? That's, that's the big question. And how is that going to affect everybody who think about doing a short sale or could be in that position here coming soon in 2013? So it, it sounds like even in real estate and oftentimes, especially in, in a time like this, understanding you know the anniversary of some of these tax laws is a huge piece of knowing what's going to be coming down the pipe or what you should be doing. Right. Um, just, just not the Debt Forgiveness Act. There's the George Bush tax that's going to be – you know, coming to an end as well. So that's going to affect some people because what happens now, the, the main the main for that is, is you know, if you're in real estate, especially investing, um, it looks like the capital gains is going to be going up. Um, if this does not get extended, and my guess with, with Obama becoming president, I don't think this is going to be one of those uh, tax bills that's going to continue. I think this is probably going to end. So we have that new 3.8% tax coming in, and we have, um, there's another 1.2 little provisional uh, tax break that was in there. So you, uh, with, with the old, uh, so it's 15% now, but it's going to be 20% back to the normal capital gains. And then with a 3% on top of that, plus another 1.2 that's in there, it comes back now it's 25% capital gains that we're looking at beginning January 1, 2013, and that's going to have some effect as well. So what does that mean for real estate? I mean, what does that mean? If somebody's trying to make a plan and they know these things may happen, what does that mean people should be thinking about from a real estate perspective? Uh, You have to factor that in. When you're buying a piece of property and you want to realize uh, a profit of that, if you're going to buy it and sell it, or you've held on for a long term and and your basis is now quite large based on what you paid for the property and what you're selling for now, I mean that affects the net, what you get net. Sure. So that 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 a lot of people will probably would think about selling, may hold on to it. Um, and I've 
a matter of fact, I swear to God, this morning I was talking to a guy this morning. He goes, he's got five pieces of property. I talked to him. He says, dump it, dump it now because I want out of this. I'm, I don't want to pay that gain. So if you can bring me some deals now, I'd rather get rid of this year than next year. And, and simply from a tax perspective, it may make more sense to sell. I mean, well, yeah. you better start moving. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. Right. with uh, Thanksgiving next week and then the holidays mm-hmm. throughout December, I mean, it's it's game time if you're going to do that. Well, it's a little late now. I mean, this is something that should happen earlier, but for this guy's case, he's willing to do something like right now. So, uh, you know, it, and everybody's asking, so what's going to happen with this? I think this bill is is also included in the bills that are going in with the, with the George Bush's tax. Uh, credits. Um, so people are saying, you know, Congress is saying right here, I've, I've read on the internet, I did, did some research on this, and they're saying they're all for extending it. But yet there's other people saying, well, this piggybacks all these other bills. And if these other bills don't go through, then the Debt Forgiveness Act will not go through. And um, so it doesn't mean, it, let's say it doesn't get passed. Let's say it does expire. I mean, it's not the end of short sales because uh, we work with a very large uh, legal firm that specializes in handling and representing people who are in a distress situation and foreclosures. And they average right about 1,000 files a month that they're handling. So they actually went back and did a survey on that. And out of that survey, they found that 85% of all the deals they did would not be affected by the Debt Forgiveness Act if it expired. Because there's always that IRS um, uh, situation. The insolv- in this, the, uh, you're insolvent. Right. So... If it does, don't, you know, that's one thing we want to educate people, let them know that in most cases, this is really not going to affect them. This is going to affect more people who do have a pretty high, uh, uh, who qualify for a short sale, but yet they still have a good asset base. It's really more of somebody who is strategically short selling their primary residence. Correct. Who doesn't need to. Right. right. And, and that's who it would potentially affect. Term. Is, is that sound? Mm-hmm. Does that sound right? right? Right. So, what do you see then as the future of short sales? You do not, do you not see it changing because, I mean, most people aren't able to come up with these. You know, if property's falling two hundred thousand dollars. You don't have to. You know, a lot of people don't have the two hundred thousand, and they're fall kind of falling that, right. the you know the insolvent bucket, I guess. All right. So we're meeting a lot of people. I mean, we have we're working with you know, approximately about ten clients right now. So. This is one thing we want to educate them because right now people don't understand what's going on. I hear other people, agents talking to their clients on the phone, whatever, at the office. I hear them, you got to do this now. If you're not, man, you can pay all these taxes. And, right. you know, it's wrong information. They're, they're, they don't understand really how this, how this really works. So, no, it's, it's not the end of short sales. Short sales are still going. They're going to be strong, and they'll be here for another three to four years. That's not a problem. So our job is just kind of explain people that what's going on so they're educated about this and make sure they talk to their accountant, make sure they get the proper tax advice. I'm not an accountant. I don't know all the ins and outs of all this, sure. but um, it, it's one of those things to where that's like we like to educate ourselves so we can educate our clients. Joe Eddings and Carolyn Loudenbeck join us from the Eddings Group Real Estate. Uh, so, guys, as you start looking on at, at again, kind of the future, you know, you you, you, you got to look ahead. Nobody's in your industry. People aren't very overly interested in maybe what's happened in the past, but you certainly can learn from it. Uh, you know, I brought up anniversaries earlier, and sometimes, you know, you work on a marriage, you work on a relationship to make it better. Are there are there key factors that people can learn from over the last three or four years as it comes to short sales moving forward? Well, I think I think if you're in that if you're in a situation, you're the longer you the longer you wait, the the harder it's going to be to get something done. So it's you can't really wait for the spring like some of the other homeowners. You need to be contacting somebody that knows what they're doing right now. And so, um, and I think by all means, you need to be talking to somebody that's, that's you know, knows what they're doing and, and can give you a decent advice. So in some ways, playing the game for maybe the market's going to get hotter in the spring really makes zero difference to, to somebody doing that's, a short sale? Probably not. They're not going to, they're not going to make that much uh, have that much appreciation, if any. There's some that say that the prices are going to go down now that, you know. So it's really, I, w- I wouldn't wait. I'd be at least gathering yeah. knowledge, information and knowledge. And if you're short, you're short. It could be ten grand, thanks, twenty thanks, grand, Joe. fifty thousand. <laughs> yeah. I see you sitting in the yeah, chair yeah. next to me, yeah. and yeah. just to, just to come okay. down to no, my no, level. No I, pun, I, no I pun intended. That's why you're sitting. Yeah. We're standing. <laughs> Still taller than me. So. It, that, that has really no bearing as far as market appreciation, so the weight hang off. In that situation, get it going now. Because if you're 10, 5, 20, 30, 50,000 short, you're short. 
and there's nothing that's going to bring that up and make up the difference, you know, unless you want to sit there for the next eight to nine years, depending on how far you are. Sure. Well, uh, Joe, it's Carlin Loudenbach. Thanks so much for joining us. Really do appreciate having you back. And, uh, you know, with, when it comes to that short sales and the tax laws and the differences of the things that can that are changing, uh, always it's always good to be on top of that because a lot of houses out there are in that situation. A lot of homeowners are in that situation. Right. Thanks so much. Hey, when we come back, good friend of our show, Glenn Thiessen, is going to join us again, and we will talk to him more about different ways to manage your finances. We'll be back.